Brotherhood and Betrayal is an in-depth look at the trials and tribulations of street gang and motorcycle club life. This isn't the run-of-the-mill book that doesn't get the goods. This book will go into detail of events that actually happen. All materials in this book have been approved by those involved. There is nothing poetic, nor is there any price worth paying for the life we choose to live on the streets. James Hollywood Machikari, Brotherhood and Betrayal. And how you guys doing? Welcome to the show. Happy you did good this weekend for Easter. Hopefully you got to enjoy uh, your family, your kids, grandkids, whatever you have. Hopefully you got to enjoy them. Today, first half of the show over here on YouTube and Spotify and all that good stuff. We are going to be talking about the case of Mo Capo Morales. He is the correctional officer that has been in the news. And if you look at all the media reports that have been done on this story, it is all one-sided. All one-sided, man. We're going to take a look at these news articles, and I'm going to walk you through how bad this really is. And do you know what all this stems from? A case that he filed against the state corrections department because he worked in segregation. One of the locks wasn't working. Somebody blasted out at him and got into a fight. He got hurt, and then he filed workings comp and all that. And this is, I believe, two years after he got out of the motorcycle club he was in. He used to be the national president of the Thug Riders until 2017, according to him. What I cannot believe... It's because you have to re, you know, recertify or something like that, he was telling me, to get your ID and all that stuff. Well, after he filed the lawsuit and stuff, the union was involved until the charges came down. I think it has everything to do with the state covering their ass for this faulty deal that happened to him. He was a correctional officer for 20 years. I believe he said since 1998 or 99, something like that. He's in a pretty messed up situation. And yeah, he's a correctional officer. Oh, he's a cop, blah, 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 blah. That ain't the point of this right now. It's a point that somebody got screwed over because they were in a motorcycle club. They are actually using his membership in a motorcycle club against him to throw him in jail. They're saying that he falsified reports when he went for that re-up. As everybody knows, this is happening all over the country. People are losing security clearances. They're losing jobs because there are memberships in clubs. Now, when I walk you through all this, you're going to be amazed at some of this stuff. There was two articles, one written in 2020, and then a recent one by Jerry DeMarco. One in August of last year, and then one this month, or last month, it's uh, April now. Almost the exact same article. That kind of makes you wonder, okay, why are you putting out these articles, the same deal, with little changes here and there, within, like, a nine-month span? Is the paper working with the government? What? I don't know. But I have never seen that done before. They really don't got much on him. Because his membership is documented 
working all the way back, I think we're going to show you a little bit of a video. Let me look here. Since 2012. He wasn't fired until after he filed this lawsuit. And unions. Oh, you know what? I support unions, but you assholes fled at the first sign of trouble. And as far as I know, everybody else knew about this. Because some other COs were a part of the club. Law enforcement was part of the club. When he left in 2017, that's how it was. His membership ended in 2017. After that, who cares? But it goes to... What all is going on here? Anyway, I got distracted there for a minute. I'm going to turn off this phone because every time I start recording, the damn phone goes off. It's like everybody knows what it's happening. And boom, they hit me. Anyway, let's go into some of this information, how we first got uh, hooked up and stuff. This was an email from Mo. What's going on, OG? I pray all is well. I'm the corrections officers that got indicted on the charge you blogged about last week. I never address anyone, but I'm addressing you because I respect your platform and always admired how you project or protect the culture. I just want to set the record straight with what's going on behind the scenes that no one knows. I have been a CO for 20 years. I'm 42 now. So that means he got uh, working at 22 years old. I never hid or lied about me being a thug rider, which is an acronym for Today's Heroes Unifying Generations. I was a proud member for over a decade and served as the national VP for over a decade as well. I was injured on the job in April of 2019. That's the date you want to remember. 2019. He left the club in 2017. Due to the negligence of the NJDOC and had to have major back surgery. And this is the route they took to sever ties with me. So he had to have major surgery because he was injured on the job. He's been out of work for two years due to the injuries. So they charged me with these bogus charges to try to get my pension because of the major's workers comp lawsuit he has on them. It's viable. It's possible. They slandered his name all in the name of money. I love the MC culture and always did my job and everyone knew exactly what I did for a living. Meaning he worked in the prison. Everybody knew what he was doing. And I would have to venture to say to even the warden. I was, uh, I, and I always did my job and everyone knew exactly what he did. I was just a person that never let a job define my character of a man that I am. That's one of the main reasons I took this. I treat people with respect, always got it in return. I will have my day in court. He can't be on the show because of that. He is still going up. Throttle up. Rock and roll. April 2019 is when he got hurt. He filed a lawsuit against the state because of his injuries, which anybody would. He goes on to say TR was not a diamond club at all. We were a sport bike club for years. I left TR in 2017 because it wasn't uh, fun anymore and just faded to the back and left the culture. Remember what they fired him for. And I'm going to take you to that right now. 
And this is one of the articles I can't understand. I highlighted a date here, 825 of 2020, by Jerry DeMarco. A correctional police officer at the state prison in Newark was also a member of two outlaw motorcycle gangs. Said authorities who charged him with lying about it to keep his job. Ruben Morales, 41 of Orange, lied about being in the Thug Riders and Thunder Guards. He was not in the Thunder Guards. What they did was go on Facebook and got a picture with him and support stuff. He applied to renew his state-issued license card last year in New Jersey. The card identifies him as a law enforcement officer, grants him access to state buildings, and marks him as an emergency responder. The renewal process requires the completion certification and submission of an application that answers several questions related to suitability of the employee to main employment. Again, he left in 2017. He hurt himself in 2019. That's two years he was gone. Two years. And then it, after his renewal, boom. Because of a lawsuit. He is charged with tampering with public records following a joint investigation by the New Jersey Department of Correctional Special Investigative Division. Well, obviously... Your special investigations division ain't seeing what I'm seeing. This is a farce. They suspended him from his job, also the Department of Corrections. Now, this was August 25th of 2020 at 5.45 p.m. Boom. Here's another one. 317 of 2021. Indictment, and I think this is the one we covered. New Jersey corrections officer hid outlaw motorcycle gang membership. Said he hid it. Almost word for word from the previous article. Morales, known as Mo, Mo Cap, and Capo, lied when asked on the forum whether he was affiliated with or a member of any subversive groups or gangs. He, it goes on, absolutely no law enforcement officer should be a member of a subversive group or gang. With correctional uh, police officers, there is a special concern relating to destabilization and dangerous impact that gang activity and gang rivalries have in prison. He didn't lie. He left in 2017. And then what you've seen, investigation the division was only a support deal with the Thunder Guards. Exact same story almost, about nine months apart. You have to say why. And not anywhere in here does it ask him or his attorney for their side. He was charged with official misconduct, tampering with public records, hindering apprehension or prosecution. Really? Falsifying or tampering with records. There's simply no room for law enforcement who break rules, evade their duties. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting statement. Now. Let's go back to this. As far as the Thunder Guards. They are good brothers and friends. I never was a member of Thunder Guards and don't even own a bike. So how are you going to be a member of the Thunder Guards and not even own the bike? I guess the investigative division didn't think of that, did they? The Thunder Guards knew what I did for a living. They just respected what I brought to the MC culture. 
they knew that he was a CEO or police officer, whatever they call him on the East Coast. They knew it. I like to, he goes on to say, I like to always back up my talk with facts as well. So even though this is a case, here are a few facts for you. A picture of my close friend from TG that left Delaware the morning of March 10, 2020 to take me to the hospital and wait for me to recover and took me home. I didn't see any gang about that. All I see is true brotherhood. And it goes on and on. Next email. This is where he's arguing that he wasn't part of a gang and that they should have known this because it was all over social media. They only went after him because he filed that lawsuit. That is my belief. Because they were negligent in getting their equipment fixed. He was attacked and hurt. Had to have major back surgery. So this is the excuse not to have to pay him, but to uh, ream him one because he dared to go up against them and get what he was due. He goes on to say, and here's a picture you have to come over on YouTube. Look at that diamond I have on. I made that up from my brain. I never wore the 1%. We was making up patches out of our thoughts and putting them together. Basically doing whatever we wanted to do. No one stopped us from doing anything we was doing. It was non Official. That was July 29th, 2017, that he took this picture. There's one with a 1% diamond on, and then he has another diamond on that was totally different. Sports bikes and all that type of stuff. Then he goes on to say, I'm the horse's mouth. Hug Riders was a sport bike club from the very beginning. We had a bunch of COs and cops in it for over a decade. He goes on to reiterate, he left in 2017, and whatever they are now is none of my business. There were no crimes being committed or any of that garbage going on when I was there. It was a respected MC, plain and simple. Again, 2017, it had mother on him. I, I'm taking that that's the mother chapter. But one guy has a diamond. The other guy, like he said, he made that totally up from his brain. But DOJ is saying he hit everything. They only brought charges in, what, 2019? But he was already gone two years, and anybody could see this stuff. He goes on to say, check out uh, this video from 2011. 2011. So you're going to tell me investigators didn't know this for all these years? Come on. Just a sport bike having our club having fun. The vi they did the video because this young man was in film school and they had to hand in some sort of documentary in order to pass his class and he asked us and we said yes. He followed us for like three weeks and basically passed the class and today is a great video and photographer. That's this video here. Thug Riders mini documentary. March 20th of 2012. Now, I don't know how many times you got to renew this card he's talking about or they're talking about. But it seems like uh, they should have known this was everywhere. Let's take a look. My name is Kappa. I'm the National Vice President of the Thug Riders Motorcycle Club out of North New Jersey. Thug is an acronym for Today's Heroes Unifying Generation Riders and IMMC. You know, you got this fantasy in your head about getting out of the life and setting the corporate world on its ear. 
What the fuck you gonna do except hustle? Blue Rock, Thug Rodder's national president. Man, I can't play with the rest of the music on YouTube. But this was 2012. And under the description, it says, New Jersey's empty Thug Riders mini documentary. Hmm, interesting. Very interesting. But, let's go to the earliest story again. 825-2020. Lied about being in the Thug Riders and Thunder Guards when he applied to renew his state-issued identification card. See how messed up this really is? That's where he uh, put this. Yes, my brother, I was once the proudest member of TR. Don't know how I can have hid this for so many years. And here's the big thing. Everyone at the prison knew I was the VP of TR as well, even though I never mixed my work with motorcycles. Meaning I never rode my bike to work. It was strictly business. Hmm. Again, they didn't know this? Really? Interesting. Then he sent uh, some pictures right here about paintball tournament for uh, police officers to help them out. Uh, then now, as far as the other illegal side business, he filled out the proper secondary employment for it, and he ran. Uh, they claim he ran an illegal food truck. When they would, why would I donate my food truck for the local PBA 105 from my department charity event? And then he goes on to say, "There's the pics and all that stuff." I'm a true biker at heart, and everyone knew what I was doing for a living. I never hit anything. I always walked with my head held high and never made what I did for a living make me a man. There's that one picture he was talking about when he was in the hospital. I actually feel God, uh, you know, bad for this guy because it almost seems... Like what he's saying is true where they're doing it because of a lawsuit. I got a lot of naysayers that are always saying, well, if it's a legit MC, if it's, you know, if it's a right straight MC, you won't lose your job. Get your head out of your asses. It's bad enough being a biker then an MC they're going to go after you even more hardcore this right here we did last week state supreme court says motorcycle gang leaders appeal is premature that was 2021 now I was looking back to see when the original charges were filed okay here we go from the months beginning in 2017, state and federal agents wiretapped at least seven different phones used by McGuire, capturing, they say, his recruitment to lead a new Rhode Island chapter of the Pagan's Outlaw Motorcycle Gang. Is this where they got it? The raids were in May of 2018. Okay. Still, a year after he left, Capel. So it seems like there was a patch over or whatever of some individuals from the Thug Riders here. A 1,274-page affidavit in the case outlined how a com uh, confidential source, <laughs> a rat, told detectives that members of the Thug Riders were dealing drugs and that tensions were growing among Rhode Island's many clubs. McGuire was released on home confinement following Vogel's 2019 ruling on the wiretap authorization. 
He faces more than 220 uh, narcotics and weapons charges. Is this what they're using as a basis of them being a motorcycle gang? That is the question. Sad state of affairs, man. You know what? They will turn on you in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat, these people in the government. Many people don't believe that. But you need to. That blue wall don't exist anymore. At least it didn't do for him. My question is, how can the state say that it was an outlaw motorcycle gang when its origin, coming from his mouth, was a sport bike club and they had a bunch of COs, which are correctional officers, and cops in it for over a decade? Did any of these other people get in trouble for what he got in trouble for? Have any of them lost their jobs like he did? That's the question. Because if you're going after one, why ain't you going after the others? If you say that cops and COs are not supposed to be a part of a sub group. I love how they say that. Ain't that really funny? How they say that. We're going to keep you updated on this. Uh, he's got his uh, lawsuits going against them for uh, being hurt. His workers comp stuff. He also wants his pension. See, in New Jersey, it is 25 years. He is, what, five years short? So at least give him some of his pension, man. But right now, they're going to try to use this to get out paying everything. What do you guys think, man? Is this a setup or what? This is how the government does people. It kind of reminds me, you know, it used to be where people would work 40, 50 years, get their pension and all that stuff for one company. You can't give that kind of loyalty anymore to anybody because the loyalty isn't returned to you. Five years from his pension. He was not hiding anything. It was all there to be seen. And now if that investigative unit would have seen anything or actually did its job, it could have seen the dates of all these posts. Hell, they could have subpoenaed his Facebook or they could, you know, right there on YouTube, see this video. And then they're going to use a criminal gang deal. My question is, would they say the same thing about the Blue Knights. How about old Ryan Erlacher's deal? Would they say the same thing about that? And if they don't, why? Because he's being scapegoated right now in New Jersey for this. He's being charged as a criminal. For one, how can he falsify something when he's not a part of that organization anymore? He's not. He left. And the Thunder Guard scene again. He was only wearing a support patch. A support patch does not mean you're a member or anything. I don't know, man. Scary stuff, man. Scary stuff. And for you those that don't believe in it, because I hear you naysayers all the damn time. That don't happen. Yeah, it does, man. It happens all the time. So that's what MC numbers have to face. Loss of jobs, everything, man. Look at what happened down in Waco, man. People lost everything. Family, the whole nine yards. 
And a lot of them didn't even have anything to do with that. They're not scared to use something like this against you, man. They're not. So we're going to go down to the second part of the show over on MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. If you would like us to cover something, man, give our opinion on a case that's happening, or get your side of the story out. It is very important to get both sides. As you can see... Those two news articles were basically the same, and not one time was he asked for comment. Not one time was his lawyer asked for comment. Because if they were, they would have known that there was a lawsuit before all this started happening. And maybe, just maybe, they could have done investigative journalism to find out the real reason why they were coming at him so hard. But instead, they only took the state's story on this. Sad state of affairs. Well, we're going to go over to the second segment again, MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. We usually go to about 9.30, having all kinds of fun over there. Uh, you can listen to us over in Discord, uh, over at the Madhouse Room. Everybody's in there, cameras on. Uh, China Dow's over there making stupid faces. Uh, the whole nine yards. So I'll catch you guys over there. Switch over. Switch over. 